So this is a um, ArcGIS Pro, and what you're looking at is a WorldView 3 satellite image from Digital Globe. Uh, this is in, a, in an area in, um, in Mozambique. And uh, we're displaying this in our uh, desktop uh, GIS application. We call this ArcGIS Pro. This is both a desktop GIS application as well as an image analyst analysis workstation. And so for this particular demo, uh, we're going to use this image to uh, do, perform an image classification process so we can extract out the tin roofs. And uh, where my cursor is, um, is the location of some of these tin roof uh, building materials. In another process, we'll, we'll show how we can also um, use the pen sharpen image to extract out the roofs that contain uh, more of the natural material uh, rooftop. So to aid in the image classification process, within Pro there's actually a variety of uh, image processing tools that are available. And these are everything from anal analytical tools such as uh, thresholding. Uh, we can also um, use a variety of the classification tools. And for this demo, we're going to use an object-oriented uh, feature extraction uh, workflow where we actually segment uh, the satellite image. Uh, there's also a lot of other image processing tools that you know aid in this type of workflow. Um, here's another one, apparent reflectance, which um, eliminates all of the atmospheric um, issues that you may uh, encounter when you're working with satellite imagery. And as I go down the list, you can just see there's a variety of these image processing tools. And a lot of these we won't have time to demo today, but these are all available uh, out of the box in Pro. Another uh, important process in um, in the classification workflow is simply uh, having a good tool for visualization. And so within Pro, um, one of the things that we can do is work with different windows and different data um, to do a visual interpretation of the imagery itself. So on the right panel, I've got the pan sharpen image. This is the same image. And then, um, sorry, on the left, I have the pan sharpen image. On the right, I have the eight band image um, displayed as false color. And so I have the two screens um, linked together, both in scale and it's in position. And so this is a great tool just initially to go in and interpret the imagery and just get a sense of the different band combinations and so forth. And so here's an example um, where we can easily see the tin roof um, on both the multi-spectral and the pen sharpen. But then this material with the natural roof type um, can be seen in the pan sharpen, but you can see it starts to blend in with the natural surroundings of, of you know, the exposed dirt um, in the in the multispectral image. And so this is really what we want to do in the first step is just get a sense of uh, the type of data that we're working with. Another um, aspect of image interpretation is really just working with the different band combinations. And so with this particular image from Digital Globe contains eight bands. And at the moment, we're just displaying it as a false color uh, composite. But I can easily go and select the image and start working with the different band combinations uh, with one button. So as I uh, change the band combination, I can see what sort of features are um, are more prevalent in this particular band combination. I can choose different ones. And at this point, I'm just trying to find the right band combination that I think would be appropriate for extracting out these tin roofs. So here's a good one. Uh, the only one, the only problem I see with this is that it doesn't uh, distinguish the bare earth from the vegetation features. So I might wanna continue to look for a different band combination. So here's one that, that I've settled on, and you can see that the tin roofs um, pop out. They're shown in yellow. The vegetation, in this case, is shown in these shades of blue, and then the bare earth or exposed dirt is shown in uh, these shades of purple. And so this is from the visual eye, a nice band combination. I think I could get a good result from here. But this is just what my eye is telling me. I also want to quantitatively, quanti quantitatively uh, look at the pixel values and see how much separation is actually happening in here. So one of the tools that Mark showed uh, in his slide is um, is some charts and graphs that allow us to to visualize that. 
And one of them I have here is uh, simply a spectral profile. And this lets me look at the spectral curve or sort of each man-made feature and natural feature on the Earth has its own unique spectral profile. And what these lines represent are those particular spectral profiles for each of the categories that I'm interested in. So I can actually turn these off and you know, interrogate each one of these. So this black line here is actually one of the tin roof spectral profiles. So what we, we can see is that in band one, it's got a very high reflectance value. And then maybe on the other side, uh, over here, band eight on the far right, we've got a very low spectral response. So as we start to plot um, other types of materials, there's another tin roof. Um, here's two types of vegetation. You can see that they all each have their own unique spectral uh, response and spectral curve. And what we're trying to do and we're trying to accomplish with this is we're trying to find as much separation or variability between uh, the different features. So if I look at my profile here, I can see maybe band two's got um, a lot of separation. Band eight definitely has a lot of separation between the features and then maybe band five. So using that band combination uh, that I chose and then comparing that to the spectral profile, that confirms that that band combination might be a good, uh, a good choice when we begin our classification process. So if I wanted to actually go in and plot my own, I can uh, click a button here and um, we'll go into one of the building footprints with um, the more natural material. And I'll just draw a, a circle around that so that encompasses and looks at all the pixels within that circle. And then I can go back and now I see this new curve that represents, um, in this case, the, um, the building footprint with the natural root type. So you can see that this has its own unique uh, spectral response, somewhat similar to the exposed dirt. And that's why this one uh, makes it a little more challenging than the tin roofs, which is, um, you know, it's way up here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and go back. And now that I've uh, chosen my uh, product that I want to use, I can begin the classification process. So within um, ArcGIS Pro, um, we simply select the image that we're interested in classifying. And there is a dedicated imagery tab, and we click this button here. It's called the Classification Wizard. This is a user interface that walks through every step of classifying uh, the image. It is wizard-based, and you simply um, enter the inputs and then click Next, 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 and it'll walk you through the process. So this is the initial uh, panel, and so I can decide if I want to do supervised or unsupervised. I can choose to pixel-based or object-based. I'll choose object-based. I've already input a classification schema, and I've already performed the segmentation and some of the training samples for the sake of time. So I'll just walk through the first couple steps just so you guys get a sense of um, what this is like. So I've hit next, and now I've come to the step, uh, step three, where I can start collecting training samples. Uh, you can see I've already collected some vegetation, some bare earth, and some building footprints of the tin roofs, and then I can hit next from there. Uh, here is where I'll um, decide what classifier I want to use. And so we support a variety of the uh, most popular uh, deep learning uh, classifiers, including maximum likelihood, random trees, and support vector machine. And I can continue through the process and just hit next, 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 and that just goes on to the next step. So you can see it's a very easy um, visual uh, wizard that lets us go through that process, which um, at times can be uh, very complex. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on uh, just the results. So here's my initial classification layer. I've got my metal roofs in uh, these dark shades of, of, of gray, my vegetation in green, and then anything else that's not that is is other. So I'll turn off my, um, my other, I'll go ahead and turn off my uh, vegetation, and then I'll change the color of my rooftops to, let's say, a magenta. And then what I'll do is go ahead and turn off 
the multispectral, turn on the pan sharpen, I'll zoom out, and this gives us a sense of running through that classification workflow and extracting out the, uh, the tin roofs. And so I can just check that on and off. And you can see it did a fairly good job of pulling those tin roofs out. Now, um, to extract out the, uh, the rooftops with the more natural uh, material, we would want to go through that process one more time. Um, but the second time around, collecting different training samples um, and using the, uh, the pan sharpen image instead. And so I'll go ahead and just turn on the results here. Here's the segmented image. You can see it uh, pulled out all these different features. And then um, finally, here's the classified results. So the red um, pixels represent the natural thatched roof building footprint, and the blue ones represent the tin roofs. And there you go. And really, from there, it's uh, mostly just QA, QC. So we can take that result and actually uh, convert those to vectors and generate um, a generalized building footprint layer uh, from the result. Um, so that is image classification in ArcGIS Pro, as fast as I can uh, demo this. And I'm going to go ahead and turn it back over to Mark. Mm -hmm.